day two, back to back. He's alive. We alive. We are here in Hollywood. So we're about a podcast. Let's run it. Let's go. Let's go. That was a- it's Dylan. Guys, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. yeah. Out here, out here. Yeah. Check it out, bro. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Luis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. We're rocking. Are you guys good? Let's rock it. Ready? Do it. All right. So. As you guys can see, we are not in our regular space in LA anymore. But we are sitting here with a power couple, business owners, entrepreneurs, and honestly, I'm sure a lot of people are, can't wait to hear this one. But we're sitting with Katie and Chris, owners of South Made Hollywood in here, baby. Let's go. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank oh, you. Thank you for allowing me in your beautiful space out here no this is badass we've been uh we've been watching you and just everybody kind of you've you've done jason um yeah. Dre. honestly just kind of putting the the self-made family and the movement on on blast you know and it, it, I, I think it's been helping your brand and i think it's been helping our brand tremendously it's it's been big because we talked about this uh when we set it up I'm like yo self-made has their own family their own community their own support system where we're not looking to get support from anywhere else, which would always be dope. But just the love and that you guys are surrounded by, it's amazing. So if you've seen us, you know how we do this. We're going to go back in time. Okay. Go back. Beginning. All the way. Where did Chris, Katie meet? How long ago? Oh, damn. Where Am I telling this? Or damn. <laughs> I, I don't know which story you'll get if you get one or two sides. That's true. But my, I guess my side was... Um, I was a personal trainer at 24 Hour Fitness, um, just kind of just working, grinding. Obviously, this kind of what what got me into self-made, but I would always see this girl, and I'm like, damn. And you don't want to say it like, damn, she's got a nice ass. <laughs> but I was like, in my head, I was like, she's got a nice ass. <laughs> she works so, out. But I, I was always under, when, when I worked, I said I, I never got with any girls that was in the gym. I didn't, just because you don't mix business and, yeah. and you're – your outside life, just because it, it'll eventually get nasty. Bad. So one one day, it was so funny. I was t- one of my clients. We were we were kind of chatting it up. I saw her leaving, and I was like, damn, I got to talk to her. And he's like, stop being a bitch. And I said, you're right. I needed that power talk. So I went up. <laughs> she was going up the stairs. I saw her walk in, and she dropped her cap. And I was like, oh, this is my time. Nope. I was too scared. Again, me, I, I love to talk to everybody. I was scared to death to talk to her. She was going up. She dropped her keys. And I was like, all right, motherfucker, step up. There it is. Grabbed the keys. And I said, hey, I'm Chris. And yeah, and yeah, we an hour. And now we're here. Yeah, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. We, we talked for an hour. And we got both got in our cars separately, like uh-huh. leaving. And we both found out later that we both got in our cars and screamed at the top of our lungs yeah. and was like, holy shit, we just met the one. I was like a little teenage boy yeah. after. I was like, woo! We knew. We <laughs> knew. It was like, uh, have you guys seen 50 First Dates? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Talking to her, they leave, and they're both just dancing on their yeah. own car. Yes, it's that's true. It. So was it more the connection out of that conversation you guys had? Yeah, I think he left out a huge part. Like, Ooh. The buildup was four months. Like, I saw him looking at me for four months. That's what I'm saying, man. But I wasn't having it. I had just gotten out of a relationship. Uh, I, w- I was getting fit. I was feeling great. I was partying. I was doing my thing. You know, yeah, I was yeah. just being single. And uh, I was happy. And I guess that's when you meet someone. That's what I was telling Ariel. When you meet someone, uh, you're most likely at your best. That's when you really, like, find the one. Perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. So, man. Yeah. So, but I was giving him rest in bitch face for yeah, like four so months. Yeah, so I was like, straight. all right. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> he's over here smiling. Where smi- are we going? I'm, he, like, I'm trying to smile. She's like, nope. I'm like, he's, over he, he's over here smiling, and she's over here like, yeah. oh, don't even look get at out me. Of here. It's, yeah. For a female, like, you don't want to get hit on in the gym. It's, it's like, Talk over, about that. Yeah. It's, That's a good one. Yeah. Especially at a public gym, you just, it's kind of uncomfortable. Like, you, you, you already know when a guy's going to approach you, and you're kind of yeah. like, okay, let me put up this wall. So don't come over here. Um, I had multiple guys, you know, try to shoot their shot. Uh, 
So basically, by the point, by the time I saw him looking at me, I was like, let's let's put up that bitch face so no one approaches me. I don't want to be approached. I'm here to work on me. Yeah, <laughs> but I think right now you bringing that up, it's like it's perfect because at a public gym, like there's a lot of guys. I'm gonna put us out there that they go to the gym. They see someone and they don't even care about working out no more. Right. Yeah. They just want to go. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Let's go out yeah. this Friday, yeah. this Saturday, whatever. But how you said it and how you mentioned to, her, to Ariel, shout out Ariel, made it through. There you go. Um, you met someone at the right time when you were at your best. Yeah. So when were you at your worst? What was the worst? I was in a bad relationship before that. Mm. I was depressed. I was fat. And he, he met me. He, he said I had a nice ass. I was at my skinniest. So what do you think now? <laughs> Damn, Chris. It's getting better. <laughs> So, yeah, I was depressed. I was unhappy. And then I, I ended that relationship. And I really wanted to s- work on me and focus on myself. And yeah. uh, I just didn't want I just didn't want to be in a relationship again until, you know, I was happy with me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was dieting. I was getting skinny. I was tan. I was fit. I was young. I was having a great time. And, uh, you know. It's just constantly working on you. But uh, I think before you meet the one, you don't realize, like, how, say you're in a bad relationship. Like, you don't realize how bad the relationship is until you're out of that relationship. And then you get treated better by somebody else. Yeah, and then you find someone who, and you're like, whoa, what? why did I put up with that? I think I fast forward a little bit because the first time we met each other at South Made Rancho, you said that she moved out here. Yeah. So this is, it, it, it's cool to hear it from, she never says it because it, it, it's embarrassing. You know, some of the things we go through, you may look at it as, as embarrassing, but it, in a sense, it's just a chapter in your book. Like, how did that chapter, what was the next chapter? You yeah. know, so it's cool when she came, I'm, it's not cool, but when she came out here to California, she was homeless in Hollywood, you know? So I always, I always make the joke, I'm like homeless in Hollywood to owning a gym. Owning, owning in Hollywood. Yeah. Running Hollywood. So it's different, you know? <laughs> got it. Come yeah. on. You got to you gotta give there yourself you go. that. I guess as an embarrassment, yeah, but it's kind of like you look at it as yourself as a failure, but yeah. But now that I'm older, like, I don't look at it as a failure anymore. I just look, as a, look at it as a just a stepping stone. Yeah, it's a, it's a part of you. It's a part of your story. It's about your chapter and how you said it. There's a lot of people that are embarrassed yeah. of what they went through and how they yeah. grew up or whatever. It's like, no, bro, why? Yeah. Because you went through that, and now you're here, and right. this is how you are. If your life is fucked up, that was just your personal choice. Yeah. Your yeah. parents can be super fucked up, fucked up in whatever way there yeah. is, but you got that choice, too. 100%. 100%. You, I think, I think the, just the way the world's going is everybody has that victim mentality yeah. where it's like, oh, this, this has just happened to me. Like, no, man, life happens to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's how you look at it and how you kind of adjust. I always say, how do you go around these hurdles that come in your life? You know, it's it's up to you whether you move forward or you stay in that shitty position. Some people stay in that shitty position for the rest of their life. Yeah, and all they all they say is, oh, one day. Yeah, one day. One day things are going to change. It's like, well, it would change if you put in the work. Right? I mean, I get it. I get the one day thing. I grew up severely poor. Like, yeah. I, I ate mustard and ketchup sandwiches sometimes that's how poor we were so you always have that okay one day I'll be out of this or and then you know I I grew up into a teenager and then I always knew like I want more I want more one day I'll have more it's you can say one day but you always have to keep pushing like yes you can be a victim to all these things but you're gonna make yourself a victim for the rest of your your life if you don't keep pushing yeah you know that's the point that's the thing Put the mic higher, Dale. This on hers. We got to make sure we capture everything. There you go. So you guys were, you shot your shot. Shot it. <laughs> scored. There you go. <laughs> everything worked out, right? Fast forward to when your relationship is blossoming. Because I see you guys' videos, super cute. I'm mm-hmm. like, damn. Let's, let's, let's talk about that. You know? Yes. So. Please do. I guess we're in our honeymoon stage, you know, like two months in and, and everything's great. Every, you're just vibing, um, going out to dinner, enjoying, enjoying life, you know. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, stage three leuke- leukemia. So, th- and this was two months into dating. And 
I got that call. I remember I was at the gym. My heart sank. I didn't know who to call. She was the first one I called. So, you know, when something like that goes goes through your head, it, it's just like, fuck, am I going to die? Like, who? She was the first person I called, and I said, hey, I, I need you. She came over, and we just kind of spent some time. Um, after that, I was, I was in the hospital for nine days um, um, getting treatment. You know, she did not leave my, my bedside once, and we were only dating for two months. So yeah. I looked at her one day when, when we were in the hospital, and I said, I'm going to marry you. I said, I don't know how right now, but I'm going to figure it out. You know, like, we're, we're going to get married. And ever since then, like, we just kind of organically, like, things, things always seem to just get in the way. Like, yeah. but it's, it's life. Like, so, if we just kind of chalk it up as, like, oh, fuck me, you know, like, it happened to me. No, it happens to everybody. So what, there's two, I want to ask two questions. So you got that call. What's your, what's your mentality at that point where, how you said, Life just kind of just yeah, shot, kicked you on the floor, it's fucking insane. everything. So what was that mentality for you once that happened? Man, I was, I was angry at the world. Like, I just, I hated everything. I, yeah. I was just like, why? You know, it, it's kind of like that, that grief, and I was like, fuck. Like, I hate the world right now. Like, I didn't want, nobody's pity or sorrow would fix me in any way, you know? Yeah. But I, I think... By me not talking about it got me through it. Because when people bring attention to that type of stuff, I don't want any of that attention. It's just me moving forward. But it didn't take until Miguel, one of my mentors, telling me, hey, bro, tell your story. Like, it's impressive, you know. And kind of as I'm growing older, I'm un understanding kind of how to tell my story. And yeah. just like, hey, hey, just like w what we were talking about, like, maybe you're going through this. Like, it's going to be all right. You know, keep your head up. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing for me was once I got through that deep darkness, I was like, fuck this. Like, let's go. And then the second question in the relationship standpoint, only two months of dating and she did not leave your side. Yeah. What did that show you? Oh, it was just like, she's rocking with me, you know? I mean, it goes back to when we met and we went into our cars and we screamed at the top of our line. We already knew we were going to be married. We, we knew we were the one for each other. So by the time he got cancer, there was no question for me. There was like, I'm already in love with you. You know, I'm yeah. not going to leave you because of this. And, you know, I had, I lost friends because they were, they were like, are you really going to stay with someone when they have cancer? You're, you're going to, that's a lot. Like, if I see sure? them, <laughs> I don't hit women. No, I, I would never <laughs> hit women. But those are, those are some people that I always think it's like, you're that miserable and you're going outside of your comfort zone and telling somebody else you should leave that person because of this. Yeah. Well, it's like um, like when you're, you're with your boys, right, and one of your boys gets a girlfriend and he's yeah. super in love. Now we lost our boy. Ah, oh, dude, what the fuck? Don't, yeah. like, nah, bro, let him be happy. Yeah. Maybe that's what, like, there's things that I know as friends we may not know about each other. So maybe that person that he found that makes him truly happy is the one that is saving him. Yeah. Because we all need to be saved oh, yeah. at one point of our life, right? You went through that. You guys are going through that. And in some way, somehow, she saved you from not getting back into a deeper hole yep. than when you got that message. Because if we look back... And say figuratively, she wasn't around. She did leave. Where did where would that would put you? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't even know. I don't. I don't like to right? go back down that path because it didn't happen. You Correct. Know, like I just look at it as like that was a blessing. That, yeah. that blessing was in my life at that time. And the blessings come randomly. Oh yeah. When so we most random. need them. Yeah. When we most need the blessings or the reassurance or that sign, like, mm -hmm. hey, I got you. Yeah. You're just like you look back like damn, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That when I needed it, right? Yeah. So now you guys are running Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Right? We're getting to the ingredient now. So yeah. we're running Hollywood. You went through your, your struggles and everything. How does that work for a relationship to take to the next level to, hey, we're going to take that leap of faith and, yo, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be our own bosses. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Because some, this, what you guys have here, is special. I see it, we all see it, and everybody that knows you sees it, because it's usually both, it's not both that take that leap of faith, it's only one, right? It's either the guy or the girl, yeah. and mm -hmm. it becomes an issue. Yeah. You guys are like... So it looks all shiny and gold yeah. and pretty and glittery on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
honestly, it's been one of the hardest. Cancer was hard. Yeah. This has been way harder. I, and that's yeah. crazy to say. But mm. we, he's, he's in remission, by the way. So he's, he's uh, almost cancer-free. Hump, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So we got over that hump. Uh, obviously, he'll be on medicine for the rest of his life. But um, for us, life just kept throwing things at us. Yeah. And then opening the gym, it was really exciting, really exciting. But also the hardest thing we've ever been through. Yeah. It was just trying – challenging anything that could go wrong did go wrong yeah. especially because it was at the beginning of, of everything yeah yeah 2020 2020 but what's that mentality that you guys put yourselves in to like i'm gonna take that leap of faith i'm leaving a sure thing to i know this is gonna be great but i don't know when it's gonna be great honestly like i i was the initial one that wanted to do this and i said hey i I actually started the process before I told her. So, fuck, man. Mistake like, there you go. One. I know. Mistake, Mistake number one. one. All right, married men out there, tell your wife before you do anything. <laughs> it will save you a lot, of, a lot of hassle. But she was like, you're fucking nuts. Like, you're crazy. And I was like, no, we're going to do this. Like, it, it's going to be good, you know. Yeah. And I saw the vision. I don't think I saw it as clearly, but the more we traveled this path, the, the vision kind of became more clear. But damn, like we bought the franchise and the world shut down. Mm -hmm. So it was two years of actually hunting for a building. Damn. The money was there to, to fund it, everything. It was just, we couldn't find the lease. So the, honestly, that was the most trying time of this whole thing. It was almost like it was never going to happen. Yeah. It so, was crazy. So why didn't you give up? I, we didn't have a choice. Yeah. You I, don't put your toe in the water and then, you know not yeah. get in <laughs> i was like damn i i'm, not, 40, I'm 45k deep like i ain't losing <laughs> that you know like that's just the beginning but that is a choice though that what you just said right now you could put like yeah the water's too cold ah, yeah. never mind let me <laughs> i'm gonna wait on it yeah you could have quit you well, could have said well how about we were already knee deep in that water yeah we're not like, oh you're in yeah, yeah we're in. In. you're in so yeah. I, start swimming yeah the, the thing was it's like for her it wasn't tangible for me, it wasn't tangible either, but I was, like, searching. And, like, so she was working, and I was doing all this looking for buildings. So in her eyes, she just, oh, hey, this is happening. She didn't see anything. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was just, like, we put in 20 offers on buildings, 20. So my head every day was just running. I, I, didn't, I didn't sleep, insomnia, all of that. And, like, honestly, like, some days I would just come home from, like, looking to – getting another no like dude I, I i cried in the shower i cried in the shower and like i like i said people doubt me they have doubted me my whole life so what i do is i talk shit to myself i talk shit to myself i'm like listen sack it the fuck up go find something no one's sorry for you no one feels bad for you nice. so that talk happened more than it probably should have but <laughs> but it happened a lot you know but you you had to have those conversations yeah. with yourself. Yeah. Um, there was like a video of training. And it was like you gotta talk that shit to yourself, Always. and not and not in a. It does sound cocky, but in not in a cocky way. It's like yo, like you're a bad motherfucker. Go yeah. ahead, do, do this. You get how you said. No one's gonna feel sorry for you. Yeah. You're gonna get people. Oh, oh man, it's all right. They still don't yeah. care. Yeah. They don't care that you're losing whatever you're losing or you're going through whatever you're going through. We got friends and and we have a support system, but it, they can only help us so much. It's up to you to yeah. pick yourself up. They're gonna, Dylan's not going to carry 270 pounds over his shoulder yeah. to like, yo, go ahead. Yeah. I got to do it, bro. I know you're going to help me, but I got to figure this out. Yeah. So you had that conversation with yourself. Every day. And for you, what was that conversation? So I have told him before, like, before we decided to move on with the gym, he was in a weird place post-cancer, 2020. He was in a weird mental place. Like yeah. he was, he didn't have a purpose. He did. He wasn't working because he had full time disability because he was full blown in treatment. Um, he was depressed. It was sad. Like I, and I told, and I told him, you know, seeing you go through this emotional process of the gym, honestly, it's way better than what you were before. Yeah. I would, I would take this a million times over. I just, I, <clears throat> I don't, I don't think that. 
people talk about men's mental health as much, you know? Nah. But, I mean, in reality, like, just the way the world's going, like, whatever, whatever you believe in, that's fine. But I, I think that men's mental health gets looked over so much because we're either, like, that, that macho man or they don't want us to be that macho man. But it's, like, either way, they don't really talk about, like, the weight that we carry on our shoulders as men. In, in reality, the women carry just as much, yeah. maybe even more, I think. Yeah. But in reality, I think men carry that more in their mind because of what society has put out there. Like, you have to be the provider. You have to be this. And, and, I, and I, I, I do want to provide for my wife, but at, at the same time, we're a team. Like, we're going to do this together, and we're going to battle together. Yeah. But I, I just think the biggest thing for me was in such a dark place. And, and luckily, I'm, I, I have a strong mental fortitude to, like, say, like, hey, get out of this. You know, but I don't – a lot of – a lot of people don't, and and I think the the biggest thing is like just calling your buddy and just saying, "Hey, how you doing, man?" You know, like, cause that that could go so much farther than like a post or or this and that. You know, just like, "How's it going?" Yeah, reaching out and communicating, yeah. because the way this whole movement of podcast starting was bringing to light the mental health aspect yeah. that not everybody talks about. Not everybody wants to have that uncomfortable conversation. I don't want to. I don't want to tell you what I'm going through because I don't want to cry. Yeah. So I don't want to. I don't want to let you see me cry. So I'm gonna just stick it to myself. Yeah. Unfortunately, the way the, the stats, the statistics show, it's more likely men to commit this, right? 100%. Yep. Um, you know, unfortunately, lost my my best friend to that, and it was one of those things. Like, damn, bro. Like, what if? Yeah. What happened there? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, or you could have reached out, but you know it. At the end of the day, like he could have reached out, you could have reached out, but yeah. the world doesn't work like that. It, it's we we move forward. Um, it, not to sound ruthless, like your your buddy's name will always live live long, but yeah. it was just a time, like another chapter, you know. And I think what what Facts. we can do as humans is say, hey, how can we fix this for our buddies, our our buddies' kids, and this and that. Just being supportive. So, what's your message to those people? I think my message. To you people go, that, that are you that went yeah that you that went through this, you you were like yeah. how you said your your knee was in like you were far in. I think it's just like trust the process. I know she 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 always hates when I say this like trust the process, and like <laughs> that that's my go to like trust the process. What process? People always say what process? Well, the process of getting better. How do you get better? You you start exercising. You start talking to people. You get yourself out there so that you're not alone. I think when you're alone, the, the brain is the strongest thing that we have in our body, and that's what dictates most people's actions, you know? Yeah. And, and if you're weak and you succumb to that, you're just going to be another statistic. Like, wh why can't you just keep pushing forward, like, for your mom, for your, your brother, your yeah. dog that loves you when you come home, you know? Like, in, in a sense, like, suicide is selfish, but... We can't say that to them because they, they were in such a bad headspace that they thought that was their only option. That was it. That, that's To me, that's so sad because they didn't have anybody in their life that they could have like, hey, man, I'm feeling real bad. Yeah. You know? For me, life is fleeting. Ooh. It's it's one big American Ninja Warrior obstacle course. <laughs> you literally have <laughs> shit flying at you all the time. It's just how you deal with those with that shit, you know, it's, uh, you'll have your really good times and then you're, you need to expect those bad times going to come back. So how do you deal with that? You, it's literally a roller coaster. Like you have to, for me, I, I always expect the worst and I know you're not supposed to do that, but I always want to be ready for the next thing, you know? So I, I try to, everything I go through, I, I try to get mentally stronger. It's just a constant game. Life, life is 99% shit. Like, it really is. It's Life is beautiful. Life is amazing. Of course, we love it. It's, you know, life. So, but 99% shit. And you got to deal with that. You got to you gotta be okay with that. So for those, those women, those girls that are going to watch this, listening in, um, again, subscribe, tune in, all that. For those that are wondering, because there's, I know there's a lot of women out there that, have that self-doubt, no confidence. They, they get belittled by their boyfriend or ex-boyfriend, whatever it is, 
and then they feel like shit that they don't deserve the world. And it's like, no, like you do deserve the world. But the more I remind you, you may still not believe it, but you got to believe it in yourself that you deserve that and more. Exactly. So for those that are going to listen in and hearing it from your standpoint, what could you tell them when? Honestly, it's very simple. You were born. That's the first amazing thing that ever happened to you. Like you're a human just like everybody else on this planet. Honestly, like you, you can beat yourself up or you can let those other people beat you up, but really just simplify life. You're walking, you're talking, you're loving, you're crying, you're alive. Enjoy it. You will not be alive forever. <laughs> you know? It, it's sad to think the way, but I mean, reality is everybody has a time limit. Yeah. Yep. It's just a matter of when your time is. Live your life until you can't live it anymore. Yeah. I think speaking about time limit, like this is one of the things that that killed me. Because, I mean, I'm 31. She's about to turn, turn 31. You know, we're the same age. But and a lot of our friends, like, still till this day, and just not even our friends, just people our age are like, oh, we're young. We still got time. I'm like, well, yeah, we got a lot of time. But yeah. <laughs> kick your shit into gear. Like, it's it's enough, like, partying every weekend and this and that. Like, I get it. You want to go rip it at the club? Rip it. But if it's every weekend, like, are you really – healing and getting getting into that next week like what are you doing monday through friday yeah Yeah. you know what i mean like don't like enjoy it right you gotta enjoy your success enjoy your process that's the thing whatever process you're going through enjoy that shit but if you're not doing your work monday through friday what are you gonna enjoy well also when are you working on you like when are you dealing with those inner feelings yeah because that's when it comes down to it that is that's what is in at the end of the day is going to determine your happiness because if you're not constantly working on yourself like are you are you doing you time partying's not you time no are you reading books are you meditating are you talking to yourself yeah like you know are you trying to figure out the feelings you have and and even obviously being here and you're going to the gym like are you even going to the gym yeah are you battling your health like there's people that go to the gym for either they're going to compete they're going to they're working on something but most of us, I talk from my experience, like, we go in there battling our demons. Yeah. Um, and I say this all the time. We talk about it. I'm, I'm willing to dance with my demons no matter what. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And, I mean, the funniest one is, oh, I'm not going to go to the gym because I got nobody to go with. Like, yeah. what the fuck? It's the best time to go. <laughs> yeah. Put like, your headphones in yeah, and don't talk head, to anybody. Headphones in. Go do your shit. I'm like, you going by yourself is going to teach you a lot more yeah. than you going with someone. Because now you don't depend on anybody else. You depend on you. Yeah. It'd be cool to go with a partner. But, but that's it, when you learn how to push yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I think the thing is people always want to f- feel like somebody's on their side. Yeah. Like, I get that, but it's like, be comfortable being alone. The minute you become comfortable being alone is the minute you can conquer the world. You know, like, I think, I think people are scared to be alone, whether it's at home, at the gym, on a road trip, anytime. Like, just... Having dinner by yeah, yourself. Yeah, by yourself. Going to a restaurant <laughs> and just ordering dinner. Like, maybe have a beer by yourself. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I think it's been so normalized that we need to be with somebody all the time. And I think for us, it, it's healthy because coming into this relationship, we were like, hey, you need your time. I need my time. Obviously, we, we spent a lot of time together. But she needs her girl time, and I need my guy time. You know, like, and that time is apart. It's not that we don't love each other. It's just that we know we need that break from each other because we're always with each other. Transitioning into business. We just talked about right now off camera consistency. How can, like, what for you guys to be in sitting here, you know, what does consistency mean to you guys? What does success mean to you guys? I, I think the consistency is just being, just being able to put in the hard work. Not being afraid to work seven days a week. Like, I posted something on my story last weekend, and I was just on a rant. You know, sometimes I'm like, in, in, my, in my head, I'm like, let me, let me just post something up. Yeah. And I was like, I'm blessed to work seven days a week. Somebody, somebody wrote me like, are you kidding me? Like, don't you need days off? I'm like, of course I need days off. Of course I need a week off. Of course I need vacation. But I'm blessed to work seven days a week. Some people don't even work. Because they choose not to or they can't. I got know? three hours of work today. Yeah, you know. <laughs> work hard. Let's go eat now. Yeah. It's like f- I mean, we're taking our first vacation in a few weeks uh, since like a year and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, if we, we, we haven't. Mm-hmm. I mean, Damn. don't get me wrong. We, could, we can 
pay for vacation, go and do it. But but at the end of the day, like, is that the smartest move for us? Like, we're in the middle of, we were in the middle of opening a business. Now we're growing in the, the opening, thick of yeah. growing the business, you know? So it's not, I think people look at it as like, oh, entrepreneurship, like you're crushing it. Look at your TikTok, look at your Instagram. And yeah, we, we are doing well, but it, it's hard work. It's not just like, it, it just happened, you know? Like this is 15 hour days, seven days a week, working we we have a videographer that's that's probably the most pivotal point of our team to create our content and to tell our people's story you yeah. know yeah we make that sacrifice of paying our videographer before we pay ourselves because we know he is he's our investment in our investment <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. so what do you think for each of you guys answering this separately is that that quality that trait to be an entrepreneur Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur and to figure out what it takes to be an entrepreneur. You have to be built different. Your mm. mindset has to be strong. Like, yeah. you, it's, it's, uh, hard to, it's hard to explain. Talk that it, shit. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a feeling. It's a feeling of I'm different. I'm not normal. Yeah. I will never stop pushing myself. It's. Yeah. And, and I think in the sense of like saying I'm not normal is because we're not normal. Like. Who wants to fucking work seven days a week, this and that? You know, like most else. people want their nine to five job, their their weekends off, their holidays off, and that's fine. There is yeah. nothing wrong with people wanting that. I want more than that. You know, like Back. my dad was an immigrant. He came to this country when he was twenty one from Mexico with two hundred dollars in his pocket. Built a very very successful life for himself mm -hmm. and my family. And now for me, it's like there's no excuse to quit or there's no excuse like it's hard you know what, like, what was the business that, that your dad had uh so he owned a real estate um company for uh 35 years Damn. yeah so he yeah. grew up on a farm with uh 13 brothers and sisters in jalisco and oh yeah and then moved here 200 bucks in his pocket when he was 21 didn't even know english took that so fucking leap of faith took the leap he went and got his gd he went to community college was working three jobs yeah. And now he's retired, you know, and, it, and it's cool to hear that because when I was a kid, like, I mean, get my ass up on a Saturday at four o'clock. Hey, we're going to work. I'd be like, damn, bro, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? You can't even like, call I'm, off. Like, I'm 10. I'm 10 years old. Come on. But but what that did for me is is it taught me the, like, the work ethic. Like, because I looked at my dad, even though I knew he was tired. Yeah. He was still doing it. Oh, that's, I think that's the beautiful thing about, I mean, I'm not going to say every dad because there are some fathers that chose not to do that. Yeah. No no judgment here. Someone else can judge you. But then you have those dads that they, they could be out late or work a 14-hour shift, come home. Yes, they're tired, but the next day they're up at 2, 3 yeah. in the morning. Us as kids, during that time when our dad asked us to come work, we got no excuse. Yeah. Hey, you want money to, to go buy your I'm toys? Tired. Better yeah. get your ass up. Yeah. I'm going to call off because, like, right now, I work with my dad. Prior to working with him, even on my days off, he was like, yo, want to go to work? I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's just make it happen. Yeah. Like, back then, I wasn't <laughs> in a better mindset. Oh, yeah. I got, You're a kid. You're like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. But we are just talking about this, like, last week. And, like, dude, even if I wanted to call off, like, bro, <laughs> my dad looking at me like, yeah. get your fucking ass in the truck. Yeah. That's fuck Like, there's no excuse. For me, that taught me, like, yo. Make no excuse. I can go party today, tomorrow, I'm up no matter what happens. I may be sh hating life, yeah. <laughs> whatever the case is, but putting the no excuse type of thing, right? People put an option, and when we go into this. There's no option. There's no fucking option. To, like, yes or no. You know, yeah. like, and the thing is, I think that, like, seeing my dad go so hard, I was like, dude, I can do that. So did that put a target on you? So your dad built that business. Now you're, you're here building this business, so did that put a target on you to be like, damn. Pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, in a sense it's like pressure to succeed, but at the end of the day, that's just, that's, that's the pressure I'm giving myself. Yeah. Like he's not, maybe he gives me some pressure, talks a little shit, but at the end of the day, <laughs> so why you know, She's laughing that's like, just, uh. <laughs> That's just being, that's just a, a dad and a son relationship, you know, like. My dad's not very loving in that aspect of, like, he's not like, hey, I love you, son. You know, like, <laughs> I, and I, I truly think that that's, like, the If Hispanic. we hear that coming from that's kind of like, that's like you, you good? <laughs> yeah, that's, like, the Hispanic in him, you know? Like, yeah. he grew up 12, thir 13 brothers and sisters, 
Guess who fucking raised him? His sister, not his mom. He didn't get the I love you from his dad. Yeah. So why is he going to give it to me? Yeah, when his dad gives him a good job, son. I'm like, oh, that's a moment. Yeah. So that's I'm like, moment. I'm like, damn, what did I do? I got to <laughs> that, you know? Do you cry? What? Did you cry? No. No, I, I think sometimes it just hits, hits home, and it's like it reassures me. You know, because yeah. I think the, the more I grew up, because my mom, on the other hand, um, so my, my, dad's, my dad's Mexican, my mom's Cuban. So really loving, like, Damn. Yeah, so it's like, oh, he. That's why you look like this. <laughs> yeah, that's why I look like this. Yeah, so in a sense, it's like I got that from, I got that kind of happy medium from both of them. Yeah. But in a sense, I grew up pretty comfortable and just been like, you know, I'm, I know my dad's proud of me. I don't need to hear it from him. Yeah. You know, to, to know he's proud of me. Like, we don't need that real, we want to hear it, yeah. but like, we don't need it because we know what we need to do. Yeah. Like, the past, these past two weeks, um, I was, been figuring my shit out too, you know, going through my stuff. And my dad has actually been the one to be, because he has a successful business. That's why I work for him. He built it. And he's the one that's been reaching out like, hey, I know what you're going through. I know this may seem like a lot, but yo, keep doing it. Yeah. Don't listen to nobody. You know, figure your things out. Keep working and do it the right way, no matter what happens with it. So we went to work the other day and it was late. And it was just me and him just chilling. And like, I don't really have conversations with my dad like that yeah. because... How you said, we've never been that type of relationship to be like, hey, dad, I love you. Yeah. Because it's kind of like. you like, what the fuck's wrong with you, bro? <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> like, you need some money? <laughs> what do you need now? <laughs> I'm just like, so we're just standing right there. And I was like, hey, um, thank you. He just looks at me. And like, he looks at me with those eyes like, like he can't be emotional either. So when I tell him, I was like, yo, thank you. He was like, for what? And I was like, these two weeks have been really hard for me. And you're the one that actually reached out to me. To tell me all this, and I'm like, man, like, I know you never got that, but I love you. And I even went to the extent of telling my dad, like, I'm proud of you. Aww. So, cause he's never, he's never had that, you know. Out of, I think my dad has like nine brothers and sisters. Yeah. There was no TV back then. There was right. no TV. <laughs> <laughs> there were no TVs. So, he's the second oldest, but out of everybody, he was different. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not gonna be normal. I'm not going to settle for whatever anybody, I'm going to do this. And, yeah, out of everybody, he's the one that yeah. stood on his two feet. Yeah. Yeah. Standing on our two feet is tough. You mentioned something in, in Rancho. You were a singer. Yeah, were. <laughs> no, I, I'm more of a singer-songwriter. Oh. Um, I have a huge problem with stage fright, so I like to say that I'm more of a writer. Um, I like to sing. I am learning to get over my fear. Obviously, that's that self-doubt that we all have. So yeah. I moved out here for music, and I kind of, I've kind of like, uh, I got, I started working in Hollywood, and I kind of learned the industry, and it's nasty. It's nasty industry. Yeah. It's, it's rough mentally, uh, hard on people. I, I was like, do I really... Do I really want to put myself through that? Because I knew I was m mentally, um, I wasn't as mentally strong at the point when I first moved out here. I was like 23 years old. So I knew like, okay, let me, let me try this. I, I obviously enjoy it. It's my passion. It's my hobby. Um, but at the end of the day, I was, I was like, okay, this might not be my path. And I had to deal with that. It was emotionally hard to, to tell myself, maybe this is not my path. Because at the end of the day, like, yes, you can love something, but is it meant for you? You know? And it's hard to tell yourself. It's hard, to, yeah. it's hard to realize it. <laughs> it's hard to be blunt with yourself. Yeah. Yeah, like, man, I love doing this, but, dude, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe, it's not maybe me. that's not for me. Because, I mean, as funny as it's going to sound, like, for when I started, I was like, man, Jim, this is, I'm going to be trainer. I'm going to have my brand. I'm going to do fucking good. This is what I want. Years, time went by, and I'm like, maybe not, bro. Yeah. So now, like, damn, bro, we see you. I'm like, yeah, but now it's different. Now, yeah. like, I come here because I just, this is me. Like, I'll cry in the gym if I need to, put on some Post Malone, you know, <laughs> some old Ocean Hill. I'm over here crying and shit, lifting. But I'm like, but I'm not working now to compete anywhere. I'm working out to compete with myself, make sure I stay right. sane. Mm -hmm. For you to realize that, what was, what was that process? It's hard. I mean... I, I went through kind of what he went through where I was like, what's my purpose? Ooh. You know, like, I, 
what am I going to do with my life? Because obviously I moved out here because I wanted more for myself too. Yeah. Um, watching my family, my parents be really unhappy, poor, working their you know hands to the bone still to this day. And I knew I didn't want that for myself. So I always was, I'm like trying, eyes closed, trying to figure out what's for me. You know, that's literally what it felt like. Just like waiting for something to fall into my lap, but that's not how life is. So you have to, and I, I've been telling my niece, she's about to go into college. I'm like, you need to pick something. It's okay to change it later, yeah. but you need to start on a path now. Cause the longer you wait, when you get into your mid twenties, late twenties, and you don't have a path, that's hard. It's, that's yeah. a hard shit. You, to find your way. Yeah, you said it earlier. Like we have, we know people that are thirty plus, and ah, we got Still time. Yeah. We got time. It's like yeah, we got a lot of time. But. Yeah, I got time to go to senior citizens and yeah. discounts and shit already. But so, did you figure out your purpose? Yeah, I, I mean. In a way, obviously, I'm still kind of young. I'm 31. I still have some time, but I think I just want to help people. I really enjoy. Uh, I really enjoy fitness. I enjoy uh, watching people's mindset change. So when they come into the gym, they're just starting out. They're really full of self doubt. They're they're not happy with themselves, and you can tell. You can tell when someone's not happy with themselves, and then you see them two months in, three months in, and they're totally different. Their vibe is different. Their yeah. mood is different. They're stronger in general. I had my client, she said, I picked up a bag of flour and I felt strong as hell. <laughs> she was like, before I'd be like, ooh, <laughs> you know? Bringing her back, shit. Yeah. And it, just, it lit something inside of me. I was like, damn, I really like helping people, like, expose themselves to their better selves. I th The biggest thing that I think is what's going wrong with this world is that it's just, it's me, me, me. Everybody's just worried about themselves. And I, I get that. Like, I always tell her, I'm like, pardon my language, but I'm like, fuck everybody else. It's just you and me. Because at the end of the day, it's That's my responsibility is my wife and me to, to survive, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think the, the compassion leaves. And people aren't compassionate for other people. And I think that was my biggest flaw opening this. Because I'm, I'm a hard ass. I'm like, this is how it is. Like, life's fucking hard. Get over it. But now I'm like, okay, like I have to be a little bit more compassionate because I can't expect out of people what I expect out of myself. Yeah. Because they're not all built like me. They, they haven't gone through the same struggles that I have. So with me, like I, I think I've gotten a lot more compassionate and like understanding on where, where are you coming from, you know, getting better at people. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is like that we have both gotten better at is – Getting better with people. It's there's to a point where it is being about being compassionate to others, but it has to be a limit because oh, yeah. there's people that give themselves way too much, and then they feel like, damn, bro, like why did I get used? Yeah. Like yeah. why did I feel like it's like, bro, like there has to be a limit. There has yeah. to be because oh, yeah. you can help someone so much if they don't want to be helped. One hundred. They're never gonna. They're never gonna get out of that, bro. We. I've been burned so many times. Cause I like at my heart, like I, I'm a. Yeah. I want to see people do well. Like I truly want to see people do well. I. We, that's we talked about it. I like, think it's sometimes people are like, man, he's too nice. I'm gonna take advantage of him. You know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> you know. And it, and and in that in that sense, I don't think that's a bad thing on our end because we're just trying to help people out. But Facts. and then if. If they screw us over and then we go back to them, that's our fault, you know. But it, we're gonna get burned along the, the road of life. It's, oh, big time! How do you how do you bounce back from that? How do you, how do you not get in that situation another time with somebody else? You know. Yeah, it, and I think it is a quality that we get to learn is how to see through the lies and the bullshit of somebody yeah. telling you. Like when someone someone it's easiest people throw I love yous out there or oh, yeah. I got your back, bro. Whatever you need, yeah. that moment comes and. Where's yeah. everybody? Yeah. Where's you go through the dark core? Like, bro, like, this didn't open. It could have been failed. How mm -hmm. many people left, right, throughout the process? Now that it's open, how many more people just come in? And They're all gone still, what's bro? Up, bro. They're still all gone, bro. People leave because they get uncomfortable seeing you succeed. Mm -hmm. like, Talk that bro, shit about you. Like, all, my, all the people that I hang out with in reality now are all completely different people than I well, was hanging started. out with before we started this. You built... You built a new table that is around like-minded people. Yeah, and I and I think the people that 
aren't in my life, that there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they're not comfortable being around what we're being around now, you know? And some people are like, oh, you're too Hollywood now. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? I'm still wearing <laughs> black shorts and a black shirt. Like, there's nothing Hollywood about that. Yeah. Well, it's like, oh, just because of my demeanor, because of the, the way confidence. we confidently carry ourselves. Conf Don't be mad at me because yeah. we're confident, you know? Yeah, like, there's us that are sitting here, like, there is a, a way that we carry ourselves and the way we carry ourselves put us in this place. Oh, yeah. We're not sitting here all together because we're just whatever. Yeah. Mm. I mean, my life motto, and people can talk shit all they want, my life motto is fake it till you make it. Even if you don't feel like you're the shit, act like it. People will treat you different. It's yeah. true. I was walking out of the gym the other day. I put my sunglasses on. I'm always wearing a hat, bro. Put my sunglasses on, wearing Gym shorts and a black T-shirt. Someone's like, damn, bro, you look like you got money. I was like, why? <laughs> just because how you look. I was like, well, what does that mean? They're like, oh, just your swag. I was like, it's not the clothes. It's the, it's the demeanor behind it. And I think so many people are afraid to be confident because they'll be judged on, oh, you're too confident. You're cocky. It's like, screw you. Yeah. you know, if, if, if this confidence or cockiness, whatever you call it, makes you feel uncomfortable, fine. Like, I'm not trying to make you feel comfortable. I'm trying to me make me feel good. You, I'm trying to go on. Not everybody is allowed in your fucking circle. No. no. Not everybody is, a, is allowed to sit at your table yeah. because they might not just be ready for it. And it's fine. How you said, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing wrong with you. It's just maybe right now is not your time. Yeah. It's my time, though. And I, I have to take advantage of the opportunity because opportunities come once in a lifetime. You will be lucky if it comes twice, but were you ready for it? And it was it was a phrase that we heard about it, and it was like there was a lot of blessings that came into my life, and I just wasn't ready for them. Yep. Yeah. You know, my blessings maybe came to somebody else first. My blessings were just delayed. Now I'm ready for them. Right. Now I can I know how to take them and endure them and embrace them. Mm -hmm. Beforehand, I didn't know. I didn't I didn't know how to take how success was. I didn't know what that was. I didn't even know how it felt or looked like. Maybe I had it. I just didn't really know at that time. Now I'm like, little success is like this little triumph. Yeah. This little thing that I just did. Damn, I'm, I feel good, bro. I'm bad. I think people see success as the Gucci belt, the, the badass shoes, yeah. the, the, the whip, all that stuff. That's not success. You know, that, that may be success in your mind, and that's fine. And if, if that's all you want in your life and that's your success, rock it, bro. I'm going to get my nice cars. Right now, can I go get them? Yeah. Will it, will it put me back a lot? Fuck yeah. What's, what's the right move right now, though? Grind, grind, grind. Hustle so that in two years, three years, four years, we have two gyms. We got rental properties. We got this. We got investments. It's not about the materialistic things right now. Those things will come. I know they'll come. It's, the money and the success is different. I'm not going to show you cash of yeah. how rich I am, but I'm going to bring you to what's mine. Yeah. I'm going to, we're sitting here in your Lamborghini. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Technically, we're okay. sitting here Bugatti, in bro. Bugatti fucking, right here. We're just fucking sitting you know? here. Others don't have that. I think it, it really put into our perspective. We were doing this other podcast, and they're like, oh, like, what, what does this cost? What does this cost? And he's like, you guys are running a multi million dollar gym. And I was like, Kind of looked at her and I was like, damn, we are, you know, like it, I don't put it into my perspective because it's the money isn't like it's a lot of money. But like for, for us, it's just like the investment and in, and in how we're changing lives, how we're helping our trainers change other lives, how we're helping our trainers change their lives. You know, the work that you guys are doing is is worth 100 times more than the actual. Oh, yeah. I oh, had, I mean? my client hit me in the face the other day, not physically, but... Oh, I was about my, to say, damn. No, not physically. She got mad. She, she like, said something that blew my mind. <laughs> and honestly, I'm so, I'm so humble because of my humble beginnings. Um, it doesn't, I don't think about it this way, but I have, some, I have a friend who competes with me, like constantly competing, comparing. Um, and she was like, you know what? She can't do that because these are your weights. This is your gym. This is your equipment. And I was like... Damn, bro. Damn. <laughs> like, you're right. Talk that shit, eh? Yeah. You're right. You let someone else talk it for you. Yeah. You let somebody else talk about your success. Yeah. yeah. You don't got to say it. No. Nah. I mean, I think that you see the people that are like, oh, I'm crushing and I'm, I'm, I'm successful. Those are some of the least successful people. I think the funniest one is 
when you're around a group and they're talking about how much they just spent, oh, how man. much, they, like, I just spent X amount of money on my car, da, 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 and, and I'm just like, what? Oh, yeah, we're going to the club, and we're going to buy, like, three bottom. Bro, like, me and Dylan have gone out, and it was, it, it's the stupidest thing because, bro, a 12-pack of beer. Yeah. Oh, it, don't it, it, even, bro. It's, like, 25 bucks at most at a, at a liquor store, 7-Eleven. Two hundred dollars, and you just had tables. Well, I'm like, Mm-mm. Hmm. yeah, that killed us, bro. We went to um, Splash House in Palm Springs for a weekend, <laughs> right? I was like, let's get it, let's get a table, and we did it, right? Yeah. Two grand, to three grand. I was like, damn, bro, like shitty bottles of vodka, fucking shitty beer. <laughs> I was like, damn. But you know what? I think it's the experience and what it yeah. is for people now. Is it's look at the flex, bro. I got a table. But it's funny because there's you're gonna buy a bottle and I'm gonna post it on my social media, yeah. even though I didn't push in and that <laughs> They're like, hey, do you want the top <laughs> shelf vodka? I was like, fuck no, I'm not paying nine hundred bucks for that shit. San Diego, <laughs> we buy <laughs> it's crazy. It's Don, bro. Like a Don Julio Blanco, it's a forty yeah. dollar bottle. And we're like, all right, the experience, right? Birthday yeah. and everything, like, yeah, experience. Total. Uh, total is five hundred cells. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what's wrong with you? Insane. You and know what? They know they could do it, though, because people will continue to come back. Uh, that, Yeah, dude, they brought a cup that was like this big, four shots, one drink each, done. done. Wow. She's like, do you want to know? Like, no, no, nah. no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to go get a bottle of water. I'll yeah. be chilling the rest of the time. Yeah. It's, just, it's just kind of crazy. That's what, like, I don't mind going and doing that once in a while. You yeah. know, like, have some fun, but. Celebrate. People do this shit every weekend, just like we were coming back to it. You know, you want to go out and party? Cool, man. But I, I was on Instagram, and I saw at um, EDC or so, someone had a $280,000 tab. I, I watched it. I was like, my mind was blown. And it was circulating the internet for a while. I was like, damn, my fuck, you, you, you got famous on crypto or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it, no, it's – everybody has their, their things that, yeah. you know, they feel cool with. Hey, if that if you cool with that every weekend and that and you like spending fucking ninety percent of your check just on yeah. going out making others feel happy, yeah. Or hey, come with me. I have a bottle service, blah yeah. blah. Then yeah, you're gonna get surrounded by all that love. Oh yeah. But when you don't got nothing, who's around you? Right. Is that you real know? love though? Yeah. It it was a phrase of uh, Rick Ross was talking about it, and when he was coming up, he had two private jets. He had about 20, 30 people with him. And then someone brought it to his attention. He's like, yo, like, do you know everybody around you don't, doesn't even, don't even like you, don't even love you? He's like, you got to change it. So he was like, told one of his, told, they were going to, I think, New York or something. And he was like, hey, man, like, this, this is going to stop. They're like, what? He's like, I don't got it like that no more. Oh, yeah. I he was like, I'm broke. yeah, I'm broke. He was like, out of the 30, the 11 people I rock with right now stayed with me. Damn. He's like, I didn't, I, will, I was lying. I had it, but it got to, every, once I, everybody knew I didn't have it, everybody left. Yeah. I'm like, and that's just it. You, we're going to go out today, and, and we're like, yeah, we can invite 20 people, bottle service, whatever. But how many people are going to get me when I don't have anything? Yeah. Or when I'm deep down in my yeah. in depression or anxiety, who can I call that's going to answer me without a doubt? Hey, what's up? How are you? Hey, bro, I'm not good. Cool. Okay, I got yeah. you. Most of those people ain't going to come around. I tell him, I tell him that, because obviously when we were new to Hollywood, we were getting all this attention from all these people. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I was like, look, because I used to work out here. I was like, look, like, it's cool, but these are not your friends. These people are not your friends. And guess what? We're months in, half of them are gone. And I, I think the biggest thing is, like, ev- everybody in Hollywood is like, oh, I got a million followers on Instagram. I got this, I got that. And I'd probably piss some people off because I charge every th- single person that comes through that door. Oh, let me just get some content here. You know, I'll tag you. I said, your, your tag's not going to do me anything. You could pay our, our day shooting fee. Oh, you're going to do me like that? It's like, bro, I don't know you. Who, who, just because you have followers, you think that's going to gain attraction to my business? And I've told people no, flat out. And yeah. they probably looked at me like, yeah. But they I'm, maybe never got that no either. And, and They're and not used to it. And that's fine for me. Like, this guy was like, do you know who I am? I got a million followers. I looked at this dude, and it was like two months in. I was like, do you know who I am? Mm-hmm. He's like, no. 
He said, why? I said, I spent a million dollars on this. Get the fuck out of here. You know, it's like <laughs> people that have that, like, that audacity to say, like, I'm this. Who cares, bro? Yeah. We're all nobody. Yeah. We're all nobody. Take Instagram away. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? You're your car. You're your watch. You're your flex. That's all you are. Take your Instagram away. Yeah. You know? And it's a great way to spread your, spread what you're doing, but I think it gets to some people. Like, oh, I'm this. I'm this. I'm that. No, you. You're a it, social media star? What does that mean? We've talked about this before. If the day of tomorrow, everything turns, shuts off. No more social media. Yep. No more. No, you can't even see numbers anymore. Who are you? Yeah. I'm still this bad motherfucker yeah. that's going to do what I still need to be doing. I'll make my own numbers up. Yeah. You know? Like, you're going to know when I walk in through that door who I am. But that's how you said the demeanor. The way we carry ourselves is different. The way we each individually here carry ourselves, we know we bring something to this table. Right. And that's how no big talk. That's yo. That's my confidence. You may take it the way you take it. Yeah. I am who I am. I'm him. You know, yeah. like just be. I if I built this, I cannot let anybody else just walk over exactly. and piss on my shit. Like exactly. This is mine. Yeah. But it, it shows a lot. Like these influencers and whatnot, they they get a lot of free shit, and that's what they start to expect out of yeah. everybody and everything else. But if you're a, if you're a good person, you're going to help these small businesses. You're going to actually yeah. purchase items from these small businesses. Full price. But hold up, <laughs> if Why you not? really do have a million <laughs> followers, these brands should be paying you hundreds of thousands of dollars if you got all these followers. Yeah. You can pay my day fee. Or you can pay this. The You can pay that. Yeah. You just choose not to because you feel entitled. It's Absolutely. like, bro, if you really are that famous, people are making more money on Instagram, TikTok, than some movie stars now. Facts. It's crazy. <laughs> Man, we're in Hollywood. Have you guys gave yourself the flowers yet? No. No? <laughs> I'm going to answer that real quick. All right. No. Why is that? Because we're still grinding. We, yeah. We're not where we want to be. So until Nowhere. we are where we want to be, no flowers given. Where's, where is that finish line? Is there a finish line? I don't think so. <laughs> See, I don't, so, so we always have that. We kind of go back and forth of like, what is success? You know, for yeah. me, success is being so financially off that I don't have to worry. <laughs> and it's not like an aspect like I just want money. But with wealth comes a lot less there, obviously, you get more responsibilities and more headaches. Yeah. But then that asset can fix those problems. And I'm not saying it's going to make you happy, but m my thing is, like, we're young in the grand scheme of things. So when I say, like, I hate people saying they're young, yeah, just because you're parting. Like, I'm, we're young. Like, I want to keep building. Yeah. I want to, by, by, by the time this is over, I want to potentially own two, three self-mades fucking... Um, rental properties, who knows what, what else we get into, other businesses, I don't know, you know, yeah. but but as of now, like, I think yeah, getting getting a rental property and then opening up another gym within the next year and a half. But I feel like once you reach that pinnacle or that finish line figuratively, it's still not the yeah. finish line. That's what my version of success is happiness. Ooh. So... He, we go, we, that's why we go back and forth. Cause I, obviously I want all these things. I want a successful business. I want the investment properties, but I want happiness. I want, I want freedom. Yes, financially, but I want freedom in general. So my version of success is just a little different because money doesn't always make you happy. And uh, yes, it th can. That was my next question. But, Does but money bring happiness? I don't, I don't think so. But just like you said, what, what did you say? You want freedom, right? Yeah. What is that freedom? What is, what's your freedom? I mean, obviously, freedom costs money. No, but what is your freedom? <laughs> what do you want to... I know she wants to travel. She wants to see the world, right? Yeah. So that's her happiness. That's her freedom, right? I want to so, experience life. I want to experience people and culture. And yes, it costs money to do that, but really, not really. Mm. <laughs> so I differ because I'm like, yeah, you could go on these trips and, and penny pinch, right? Yeah. Yeah. But... What if you just had the money where you're like you you're financially secure where you can go take a three week vacation, not worrying about your businesses that are running, and have plenty of cash to run, enjoy, do whatever the heck you want in that city where you're at, any place in the I, world. I think that's one of the things is when you go on a trip, right? 
and you're gonna you want to do this tour and all you ask like can i and, afford it yeah or like mm, ah, damn i can't do that like yeah. bro like it's once in a lifetime exactly so it, it i know money doesn't bring happiness but it brings the comfort for sure and we and i've said it before when i got money I'm going to have a different set of problems than yeah. when I don't have yeah. money. 100%. So, like, I know people that are, oh, I'm 26, that are 26, 27, don't even know what the fuck they're doing still. And I'm over here, like, stressing, like, <laughs> damn, bro, by the time I get to 30, I want to make sure I got yeah. this inset. Like, yeah. I want more, not like, oh, I'm going to live life, I'm going to live this. I'm like, I'm just going to let it happen. It's like, what, like what, what do you mean? Someone's going to run across the street on one of those little bird scooters and slap you. <laughs> that's that's fucking surprising life. It'd be know? like Ariel. <laughs> oh, shit. She was trying to break and she pressed the fucking gas on it. Oh, <laughs> she went through. God. That shit flipped like three times. <laughs> you good? <laughs> We're like, what the fuck just happened? But that's a resemble of life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm perfect for Hollywood, you know, like. Uh, it was perfect content, perfect. Yeah. Con <laughs> but that's it. I know tomorrow's not promised. I no. know tomorrow doesn't bring like something sure. But I know I'm doing my work, so tomorrow can be something sure for me. Oh yeah. yeah. I may not wake up. You know that's the thing about life. I may not wake up, and if I wake up, I already won. I'm yeah. blessed. Yeah, exactly. Shit can be burning down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I woke up and I have an opportunity to live my life the way I wanted to. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't are cannot live their own life because they live in the shadows of yeah. parents, right. families, stigmas. You know, you're a man. You got to bring the yeah. money. You got to bring the bread. But, yo, what if right now you just can't because you're yeah. not really good? And I, I, I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give to any young give man it out us. there, any young man is like, don't let that pressure hold you down because you will face pressure from – the day you turn to a teenager and the, the day you die, you know, like these young men these days, I, I think the stigma of like, oh, you can't have your masculinity and this and that. Like, no, have it. Don't be fucking unapologetically manly. You know, like I, I don't <laughs> care, you know, yeah. like in that aspect, don't be an asshole. You don't have to be um, rude to women and this and that to be a macho man. Like that's that's a stupid stigma that's been put out about yeah. masculinity you know i think masculinity is is being confident in yourself you know being being a strong man around other strong men you know is surrounding yourself with good people you know allowing yourself to feel yeah yeah right we can cry yeah mm -hmm. we're we're men we can go to the gym we can do this do that we can cry but it doesn't take away anything from you yeah you are who you are yeah. you're just in tune with yourself so in tune that I even told Dylan. I was like, the other day, I was having a whole moment. Like, an hour just fucking crying. And stuff. I'm like, dude, I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, fuck, is it really? Yeah. But he's like, you good, bro? You good? And I was like, it's my body releasing. Yeah. yeah. It's my body letting everything out. So now, once I'm done with this, I go back, and I'm 100 miles an hour once again. Exactly. I, I just refilled the tank. Yeah. I'm yeah. good. Now, let whatever rebuild again. But it doesn't stop. Let's fucking roll. That literally happened to me just two weeks ago. Talk about I that. I crashed hard. Talk about that. We've been going, 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 going mentally and physically. I woke up one day. I felt like a train hit me. Like, and it lasted for two weeks. And the last day, I, I was just crying. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop sobbing. And he was right there by my side. And sorry, I'm going to get an emotional. It just, you feel weak. You know, you feel like, what's wrong with me? Like, I, I legit was having thoughts, like, am I mentally going? Like, what's happening? And him just being there just meant everything. I didn't even want him to talk. Like, don't say <laughs> anything. Just be here for me, you know? And he was. And it's, it's like when you start to feel emotionally and physically drained, you, you need to listen you, to your body. You need to listen to yourself. Take, take off. Just do nothing. Sit on the couch. Watch TV. It, do nothing. Uh, yeah. Recover yourself. Yeah, no, that's, you know, that that day, that Saturday, I mean, we got home early from a podcast. And, I mean, the thing about becoming a entrepreneur or going into this type of line is you have to sacrifice a lot more than what people think, right? Yeah. Time, family time, friends, 
your own time. <laughs> like, there's there's a lot that has to go behind it. And we got to that point. I got to that point. I was like, bro, like, am I, this is a lot. Yeah. I'm like, I'm losing. A, I'm, I know I'm losing things, and I'm gaining here. But, dude, these losses are taking a toll on me. Yeah. And it was just like a splurge, like. But you beat that that mindset. It, yeah. It's all, what it is is it's that mindset. It was, in. bro, but it was my son it's that hard. did it to me. Yeah. <laughs> my son is two years old, and he was like, Daddy, podcast. I was like, ah, don't do this, dog. Yeah. But my conversation to him, even though he doesn't really understand it yet, it was like, yo, like, I'm doing this for us. Yeah. I'm doing this for you so Daddy can be home when everything so is done. So you can done. have your own studio in your own house doing your yeah. own podcast. You and know? he can do whatever he feels like doing in his life. He can do this social media. He can work with my dad. He can do whatever, whatever his heart desires at that time. He figures it out. We have the availability and the capability to do whatever, go wherever. And yeah, hell yeah, I went outside. I was like, damn, bro, yeah. like my son. But how you said, I got it's a mindset. My thing yeah. is like, I'm a bro. I'm bad. Let's run this. Well, we all need that, like that, just release. You know, like, yeah. maybe... When's the last time you've done that? Fuck, dude, a while. <laughs> I'm about to go do it soon. Um, <laughs> right no, now. So, so I always say, like, like, I'm kind of a degenerate. I get, I just love to get tattoos. Like, my, my parents hate them. I didn't them. notice, bro. They fucking hate notice. them. Bro, they hate them. <laughs> but, like, recently, I've gotten a lot of tattoos since we've opened the gym. But what I've realized is it's, it's almost like my therapy. Like, I, I call my tattoo at I'm like, dude, I need a session. All right, cool, come in. Good, like, five hours, just pain. Just, I hate it. How was that? F- terrible. Terrible. Kind of, kind of but what I do is, like, I just go into that zone. It's like, damn, like, that sucked. But, like, it almost gets me out of what's going on in real life. You know, it's yeah. like my pain therapy. Like, that's my sitting down with a therapist. So what, what's your, what's that one thing that just gets you there? Like, puts you in that spot, like, damn, bro, like, you go through it when you either go through this type of moment or you think about this moment. I just think it's kind of just the day-to-day. The day-to-day, like, I think we almost forget because we just go. Get up, go to bed, do it over. Get up, go to bed, do it over. And it's not a bad thing, but it gets to you, you know? And sometimes I'm like, damn. I look at her, I'm like, I need a tattoo session. She's like, shut up, you don't need any more. <laughs> but it's, it. to me, I'm just like, I, that's like my kind of release. Like, I love to work out. But recently, my workouts have been shit, you know? I don't know whether it be because there's so much going on in here, so much going on in my mind, but it's just, that's my release. That's my, yeah. I don't even know the tattoo artist, but I'm just going to get down and, like, just torture me for, you know, <laughs> like, that. that's my release. Yeah. That's how I kind of feel at peace. Do you self-meditate? Do you take time away from, like, even being away from your wife to just sit alone? Honestly, like, my time sitting alone is driving to work. Like, I just either, sometimes I'll drive in silence. Or sometimes I'll just be fucking jamming out. What do you jam out to? Oh, man, it's, it, I'm all about mood. So, like, it's so weird. Like, when I'm, like, really, like, anxious and, like, I, I have anxiety, like, I listen to death metal. I don't know why that calms me down, but that just, like, oh, that literally, <laughs> like, calms my soul. Yeah. I don't know why, but it does. <laughs> Um, I love EDM house music that just, it, so I listen to music to like how it makes me feel like yeah. the words are cool, but like I listen to how it makes me feel. All that EDM is like, it, it's feel good. Yeah. And for you? We're so different. Yeah. <laughs> Death metal gives me anxiety. <laughs> it calms mine. But <laughs> <laughs> I like meaningful music. Lyrics are everything to me. Oh, I'm a senior songwriter. So, or I was, sorry. Um, did you sing at the wedding too? No, they tried to pressure me. She too. said she was going to, but oh, you would have cried for sure. Oh, I would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually knew if I did, I would cry, and I would be like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, Nah, I'm gonna skip this one. <laughs> but I think it's funny. We got into this argument because she sent me this song, and she was like, "Listen to it." I was like, "All right, cool." Did, how was the lyrics? I was I, like, "I oh. said I'm dedicating this song to you. Listen Ooh. to it." Doesn't listen to it. I know I listen to it in my perspective, right? And then she was like, "You don't listen to the lyrics, this and that." And I was like, "Time out." <laughs> I said, "You're you're a musician and artist, right?" She said, "Yeah." I said, "Isn't music considered art? And can't we 
articulate art in any way our mind wants us to. <laughs> and she was like, damn, this motherfucker's a salesman. I was like, this I just mother- listened to it. This motherfucker is manipulative. <laughs> no. I'm quick on my feet, bro. Just, <laughs> you I'm asked him quick. a question, he got your back with the I other one. I caught her. I was like, he it's, 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 it's my form of art, you know? I th- I but think you have to say, when someone's dedicating something to you, you have to un- you have to see it from their perspective. Why are they yeah. dedicating what this What if, if it was like a song of basically calling you a piece of shit? Like, <laughs> is this <laughs> you, you you Jerry even Springer know? now or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just so, so if there's a song to dedicate to him, what would it be? Um, God, I have a lot. Oh, I think there's the good this, ones, not the bad ones. The good this, ones. <laughs> there's this one song. Uh, you can sing it too for us. No. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> no, honestly, it's hard to remember right now. But there's this one song uh, called uh, "I Get This Feeling," basically, and it's just about it's love junk stuff. But uh, there's a lot of songs I listen to. It makes me think about him, and I'll send it to him. And honestly, I haven't sent him a song in a while because of that that move right there. But yeah. My interpretation of no, art. The, right? I've learned when I make him listen to songs that I'm dedicating, we're in the car together. I'm like, shh. So she's like, she's like, bro, I, I have the worst ADD. Like, mm-hmm. squirrel, what the <laughs> fuck? I'm like, oh, shit, what, what just happened? You know, like, I'm all over the place, bro. She's like, can you just just focus? Focus right here. I said, all right, I'll give you 30 seconds. All right, I'm done. You know, like, I just... I don't know what it is. She's like, you need to work on this. I'm like, I can't. Like, there's, I, I can, yes, but I, can. I can't. Like, it's, it's embedded in me. I'm literally just like, I'm, I'm like a dog. Like, squirrel, what's going what's on? What, what's going on next, you know? So, yeah. in that sense, I think that we balance each other because she's so, like, grounded and calm, and I'm just like, I'm the Tasmanian devil. From the minute I <laughs> wake up, I'm just like, gone, <laughs> you know? There's no holding you back. There's no holding me back. She's like, damn, settle yeah. down. You know? But when she settled about like lyrics, I think now in like listening to music, obviously there's songs that just like bump and you're yeah. throwing your shit too and whatever. But there's one actually of a big Sean and he's talking it's called Deep Revelance. And he's talking about in school they didn't teach us how to deal with anxiety. Yeah. And I was like, damn, bro, like you learn everything else, but not how to deal with all of this other mental health, all this other emotions and everything. So I have a question, though. What's up? So I feel like mental health has gotten worse Yeah. in, let's say, the last five, six years for, for the youth, right? Do you think that is, like, made-up anxiety? A lot of, like, I'm not saying made-up, but, like, hey, you're anxious. You're, you're 13, you're anxious. Like, when I was a kid, like, they tried to put me on ADHD medicine, on, on Adderall, Ritalin, my dad was like, they're like, he can't focus in school. And he's like, yeah, he's a fucking kid. He can't focus. Let him live his life. You know, I, th- I think they're so quick to medicate children and just like all it, these things like anxiety is normal in teenage it, kids now. It's a because it's a fast solution. Yeah. Hey, you're moving around. You're doing this. You're, all right. All right away. Yeah. He's That's ADD. It. Give him that medication. Yeah. Right fine. away. Yeah. And it. There is people that, there's two types of people. The people that put light to mental health, yep. but don't make an excuse not to go do what you got to do. And then there's people that analyze mental health, but they use that and they overuse it. And it's 100%. like, like, dude, don't it's do this. It's a crutch for them. Yeah, it like, becomes a crutch. Like, like, don't do this. I mean, I think, I think mental health has gotten worse because of social media, in my oh, experience. Yeah. But yeah. I also Big think time. that instead of finding the solution to the problem, like, in school, teaching you about it and helping yeah. you cope, they just give you medication yeah. instead. You know? And then not having those conversations with those people. Yeah. Right. Like, you can, like, the people that go to therapy, they do whatever best for you. Yeah. But to have that conversation with somebody that, yo, maybe you trust them enough to actually tell them, and it's just you releasing, being comfortable to tell somebody how you feel. We heard it yesterday, like, yo, whoever loves you and is around you, yo, use them as that crutch. Yeah. yeah. You know, open up. Yeah. It's cool. They're not, if they love you, they're not going to look at you any different. Yeah. They're, they're going to, hey, I got you, bro. Whatever you got to. There's such a fine line, too, though, because you can let, you can listen to these kids or you can let your friends vent to you and talk to you about their mental health, but there's a fine line of not letting themselves be a victim. 
Yeah. So, yes, Wait, tell me everything oh, yeah. you're feeling. We do this shit all the time. Yeah. Like, you're going to tell me your problems. Okay, cool. Let's talk, find these solutions. We talked about this 30 minutes. Where's the solution now? Right. Well, I could be a victim every day I wake up. Oh, I yeah. wake up with six, seven texts. This, 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 this is wrong. Yeah. I shut my phone off. I don't want to hear about your problems until I wake up. <laughs> and yeah. then I'll deal with my, my problems. Yeah, you know? like, like, you have a problem, cool, let's address it. Yeah. Okay, what is it? So, how can we fix this? Uh, I'm like... There you go. Yeah. yeah Where's the solution? It's sad because a lot of people are being, they're, they're allowing people to get a little too soft. Yeah. Just a little. Don't, don't be a victim of your own, of your own problem. Right. Yep. Don't, don't self-victimize yourself. Like we've been saying this whole time, life is not easy. And it's never going to get easier. Nah. No matter how cushiony it's, it's only are. It's only going to get harder yeah. with everything going on. It's expensive, you know, the statistics. You know, social media, bro, you're never going to be enough. Yeah. Right? If you try to compare my life to your life, you're never, you're going to feel like you're never enough. Yeah. You get that Benz, I'll get that Benz. Am yeah. I going to, oh, then I'll get the the Rolex and you'll get an AP. You know, it's it's always like a one-up. It's like, yeah. why don't you just do you? They always want to compete. And it's like, yo, bro, you're your own competition. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he could afford the Benz. Maybe you couldn't, but you still did it to try to fit in with him. Yeah. Now you're in a <laughs> worse situation, and he's thriving. But when someone wins, why are we so against winning? Saying like, "Congratulations, bro! I'm proud of you." Yeah, yeah that's you know, like, "Hey, congratulations!" Yeah. Hey, that was a piece of shit with yeah, that fucking. I know. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, again, why are you where you're? Not, you're just tolerated. Yeah, I want to go when I'm celebrating, and hey, you made this accomplishment. Yo, congratulations, bro! I'm proud of you. Now, and I tell everybody like. If you come in with a Bugatti, a Lambo, whatever you have, a property, that just puts something on me. Like, all right, now I need something for myself so I can provide. I can yeah. bring to this table. Yeah. I don't want to come to this table empty-handed. It's a potluck. How did that dude get that? How would you get that? Bro? Yeah. Oh, well, I got this business. I got this. Oh, shit. Teach me what you what you did to get that because yeah. I want to get that and more. That's what Mayweather said. He was like, I was around all these billionaires with private jets. I didn't want to take a ride. I want to know how they did it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's exactly what I want. Yep. I'm, you drive a Lambo, dude, what did you do? Yeah, what'd yeah. you do? How'd you do it? Yeah. Okay, what did what'd you have to go through? Okay, cool. Now I'm going to take it and interpret it the way I know. Let's ride. So when yeah. we meet again, now I got something yeah. to provide. Yeah. To, it's a, I think about it as a potluck. Yeah, you don't I, come empty-handed. My yeah. favorite... My favorite inspirational person is Gary Vee. He always says, goes hard. if you yeah, stop yeah. helping other people, you're going to fail. That's when you're, you, if you, it doesn't matter how successful you are, the moment you stop helping other people, you've, you've failed. Yeah. That's it. That's your quote. What's yours? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> don't be a bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, um, trust the process. It, it, it's not easy, but trust it. It will get better if you stay on that course. That's facts. Only distinguishing quality, as MP said, is we never gave up. Nope. nope. We could have. Yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah. We could have. Every day we could throw in the towel and we can be like, fuck it, I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. Let, it, let it be what it's going to be. Nope. Yeah. We ain't going to quit. Nope. And with all that, you know, I hope everybody that listened into this podcast took something from it. Yeah. Learn something from it. And if you did, share it with the next person you feel that needs to li listen to this. Because, how you said, you got to keep helping others. Yep. Yeah. Be selfless, right? Yep. Be willing to help everybody else around you. But take care of yourself also. Exactly. If you can't function, then you can't take care of everybody else also. Exactly. Right? Um, anything else that we should be waiting for self-made Hollywood? This is a beautiful location right in the middle. Location number two, maybe soon to come. <laughs> no, not maybe. Soon to come. Talk about that. We don't shit. say maybe anymore. We are fucking <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's. Wait. Oh, shit. What is. Give me a happy dad, please. Come on. We got to get a little toast. Oh, it's over. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> <laughs> little toast, real quick. You know, people watching this at seven in the morning. Oh, people watching this at seven in the morning. Make sure you get your coffees. Make sure you get your fucking energy drinks. If oh, you hold on. By the way, guys, self-made batter alkaline water. Catch it at any self-made best water in the game. Uh, we'll take a toast with the self-made water. You Look go. at this. There it is. <laughs> I want to say thank you guys for allowing us in your home, in your space, um, and letting us be that platform to share yeah. you guys' story because 
This was amazing. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for coming out, out man. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. The toast. Cheers. Oh, we got you.